Hey guys, it's Rebecca from AllTapestryCrochet.com and this is the 11th video of the Tapestry Crochet for Beginners series. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to adapt a pattern so that it fits your base. Some of the most common questions that I get are how do you adjust a pattern so that it fits your base? How do you know how many times to repeat a pattern? How do you know how many rounds of a base you should do? And what do you do when the number of stitches in the base and the number of stitches in the pattern don't match up? In this video, I'm going to be talking about all those points, and hopefully I'll be able to give you guys some clarification on something that can be a confusing topic. In one of the previous videos, I talked about how to make and use abbreviated graphs. I mentioned that it's a very important skill to know for any tapestry crocheter, and today we're going to learn why it's so important to know about abbreviated graphs. If you haven't already seen the video on how to make and use an abbreviated graph, Click here. You're definitely going to have to know that information before you can continue with this lesson. For those of you who've already seen the video, you know that from abbreviated graph you get the information of how many stitches it takes to complete the abbreviated graph from right to left. Based on the information, you can figure out these things. How many times you have to repeat the abbreviated graph to fit your base. How many rounds you should do in your base to fit your pattern or how many increases or decreases you'll need to make a pattern fit your base. Here's an example of how you can use the information from an abbreviated graph to figure out how big your pattern should be for the sides, or in other words, how many times you should repeat the abbreviated graph. Let's say you found a base pattern that you really like, and the total number of stitches in the last round is 160. Then you choose a pattern with an abbreviated graph that takes 20 stitches to complete. To find out how many times to repeat the abbreviated graph, do this. Divide the number of stitches in the last round of the base, which in this case is 160, by the number of stitches in the abbreviated graph, which in this case is 20, and that will give you the number of times that you should repeat the abbreviated graph, which in this case is 8. So in this example, in order for this abbreviated graph to fit the base that you chose, you should repeat the abbreviated graph 8 times. Here's an example of how you could use the information from an abbreviated graph to find out the number of rounds you should do in your base. Let's say you found a pattern for the sides that you really like, and its abbreviated graph takes 16 stitches to complete. Then you decide that in order to get a good size for your bag, you should repeat that pattern 12 times for a total of 176 stitches. 12 repetitions of an abbreviated graph that has 16 stitches is 12 times 16, which gives you 176. So, to find out how many rounds your base should have, do this. Divide the number of stitches you want in the pattern, which in this case is 176, by 8, which is the number of stitches each round in the base goes up by, and you'll get 22, which is the number of rounds you'll need in your base for this example. Now, in examples like these, when you're trying to figure out the number of rounds that you'll need in your base, you will always divide by 8. The reason why you'll always divide this first number by 8 is if you think back to the video on how to make a round tapestry crochet base in one continuous spiral, or in other words, a YU style base, you'll remember that each round is a multiple of 8. So round 1 is 8 because it's 1 times 8. Round 2 is 16, which is 2 times 8 equals 16. Round 3 is 24. 8 times 3 is 24, and so on. With that in mind, if we did this math backwards and we started with a total of 22 rounds, in order to figure out how many stitches were in that last 22nd round, we would take 22 and multiply it by 8, and we would get a total of 176 stitches. So if you're starting out knowing the number of stitches that you want in the pattern, you can divide it by 8 to find out the number of rounds that you'll need in your base. Now in both of these examples, we got perfectly round answers, but unfortunately it's not always going to work out that easily. Fortunately, even if the number of stitches in the last round of the base and the number of stitches it takes to complete the pattern don't match up, you do have a few options for dealing with this. The first option is you can try a different combination. For example, you could use the same side pattern but a different base or the other way around. You could also try playing around with the number of rounds that you do in your base. The second option is you could add decreases in the last round of the base. 
or the third option is you could add increases. A big point that I want to make before moving on is that here I am saying that you need to add either increases or decreases. But when I say decreases, I'm actually meaning something else. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to continue saying decreases for now. And in a later slide, I'll explain what I actually mean by that term. We'll look at these options in more detail, but first let me give you an example of a more typical scenario. Let's say in your base, the number of stitches in the last round is 168, and you choose a pattern that has an abbreviated graph that takes 10 stitches to complete. So we divide the number of stitches in the last round of the base, 168, by the number of stitches it takes to complete the abbreviated graph, which is 10, and we get 16.8, which should be the number of times that you repeat the abbreviated graph. But how do you repeat an abbreviated graph 16.8 times? You can't, so what should you do in this scenario? As I said in the previous slide, the first and easiest option is just to try using a different base or a different pattern. And that is pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't really need an explanation. But let's look at the options that are a bit more complicated. The first option is that you could see if doing a different number of rounds in the base will help you to get a perfect match with your abbreviated graph. Just as a reminder, in our scenario, we currently have 168 stitches in the last round of the base, which means that there are 21 rounds in the base, because if you divide 168 by 8, you get 21. And remember that our abbreviated graph has 10 stitches. And when you divide 168 by 10, you get 16.8, which is not an even number, which means that that abbreviated graph does not fit perfectly onto that base. So we currently have 21 rounds. Let's try adding an extra round. If we have 22 rounds and we multiply that by 8, we get 176 stitches. So in the 22nd round, we would have 176 stitches. Now let's divide that by 10 to see if the abbreviated graph will fit perfectly on to this base with 176 stitches. Does 10 go evenly into 176? Unfortunately, no it does not. 176 divided by 10 equals 17.6, which means that that abbreviated graph will not fit evenly onto a base with 22 rounds. Next, let's try leaving out a round. So we started with 21 rounds, let's move down to 20. 20 times 8 equals 160, which means that there would be 160 stitches in the last round of a base with 20 rounds. So does 10 go evenly into 160? Well, 160 divided by 10 equals 16. Yes, it does. So that means that an abbreviated graph with 10 stitches would fit perfectly onto a base that has 160 stitches in the last round if you repeat that abbreviated graph 16 times. So that's option number one, which is just trying out a different number of rounds in the base to see if that will help the abbreviated graph to fit onto the base. If you don't want to change the base at all, you have a second option. The second option is to leave the base and the abbreviated graph alone but use increases or decreases to even out the difference that might occur when an abbreviated graph doesn't fit onto a base evenly. Once again, currently with the number of stitches that we have in the last round of the base and the number of stitches it takes to complete the abbreviated graph, we get 168 divided by 10 equals 16.8. So in other words, we would have to repeat the abbreviated graph 16.8 times in order for it to fit on the last round of that base. But in reality, you can't repeat an abbreviated graph 16.8 times. To find out how many increases or decreases we would need, we need to take the information that we already have and play around with a couple different possibilities. So since our answer is 16.8, which means to repeat the abbreviated graph 16.8 times, let's start by rounding down. Let's see what would happen if we repeated it 16 times. Start with the number of stitches in the abbreviated graph, which is 10, and multiply it by 16, and you get 160. So in other words, when you repeat that abbreviated graph 16 times, it'll give you a total of 160 stitches going all the way around the base, which means that we would have 8 stitches less than what we actually need to fit our base. 
What if we round up from 16.8 and we try repeating the abbreviated graph 17 times? 10 times 17 equals 170. So if we repeated that abbreviated graph 17 times around, we would have a total of 170 stitches. That means that we would still have two extra stitches compared to that 168 stitches in the last round of our base. For our current scenario, repeating the abbreviated graph 16 or 17 times are the closest options that we have for correctly fitting the abbreviated graph onto the base. But of course, we still don't have the right amount of stitches, so we either need to add increases or decreases. But from that, how do you know which of the two is the better option? How do you know whether you should repeat it 16 times or 17 times? And then, how do you know whether you should do increases or decreases? And once you figure that out, how do you know how many increases or decreases you should do? Well, in order to minimize the curving or bowling effects that may occur due to adding too many increases or decreases, you should go with the option that brings you closer to having the right amount of stitches. In our example, since doing 16 rounds would leave us 8 stitches away, as you saw right here, and doing 17 rounds would leave us two stitches away, as we saw here. We should go ahead and choose to do 17 rounds, because a two stitch difference is much less than an eight stitch difference. So from that information, how do you know if you need increases or decreases? In this example, repeating the abbreviated graph 17 times gives us a total of 170 stitches for the sides but the last round of the base only has 168 stitches. That means that in the last round of the base, we're short by two stitches. That means that we need to add two increases in the last round of the base. If for some reason we chose to do 16 rounds for a total of 160 stitches, we would have eight stitches too many in the last round of the base because we have 168 stitches in the last round of the base but only 160 stitches in the pattern for the sides. Therefore, we would have to decrease the number of stitches in the last round of the base by eight, which means we would have to add eight decreases to the last round of the base. When it comes to knowing where to put the increases or decreases, just know that they should be evenly spread out. You don't want to have the two increases right next to each other. Maybe you could put the first increase at the first stitch, and you could put the second extra increase somewhere in the middle of the round. So earlier I said that when I say decreases, I actually mean something else, and this is when I'm going to explain to you what I mean, and this is a very important point, so please take note. Up to this point, I've been saying that you need to add decreases in the last round of the base for the sake of simplicity. But as you know from the video on how to make tapestry crochet bases, or in other words, YU style bases, there are eight increases per round. It would not make any sense to do increases and decreases in the same round because they would cancel each other out. Instead, if you need to decrease the number of stitches in the last round of the base, you should just leave out the appropriate number of increases. For example, if you need to decrease the number of stitches in the last round by two, you should just leave out two of the eight increases in the last round and do regular single crochet stitches in their place. Here's a big question that might be on a lot of you guys' minds. So with these techniques, with these methods that you've just learned, can you use any pattern with any base? Technically, the answer is yes, you can, but practically, the answer is no. When the number of stitches it takes to complete a pattern and the number of stitches in the last round of the base are really far off, you probably shouldn't use that pattern with that base. As I explained earlier, if you have to add too many increases or decreases, the transition from the base to the body of the bag will look messy. Because when you add too many increases or decreases to the base, it could cause it either to curve out or to bowl up or to become wavy. So ultimately, this will make the whole project look messy. So yes, there are some times when you just should not match a certain pattern with a certain base. Let me give you a quick example. You choose a base that has 180 stitches in the last round. The pattern you chose for the sides has an abbreviated graph that takes 40 stitches to complete. And you don't want to change a single thing about this combination. You don't want to add an extra round to the base, and you don't want to leave one out. 
and you don't want to change the pattern that you've chosen. So if you repeated the abbreviated graph four times, the total number of stitches would be 160 because 40 times 4 equals 160. This means you'd be 20 stitches short of that 180 total stitches in the last round of the base. If you repeated the abbreviated graph five times, the total of number of stitches would be 200, which means you would have 20 stitches too many in order for it to fit on that base that has 180 stitches in the last round. Adding 20 increases or decreases would drastically affect the shape of your project. Therefore, in examples like this where the numbers are too far off, it's really not worth it to try to make it work. But luckily for you, with the methods that you've learned in this video, you'll usually be able to take a base and a pattern and make those two work together. And this really opens up a big door of possibility for you as a tapestry crocheter. Because as a lot of you guys have probably realized by this point, there are not a lot of patterns out there that are made specifically for tapestry crochet. But there are a lot of patterns out there that are made for knitting or cross stitching or other types of needlework that can be used as a tapestry crochet pattern. And even though those patterns were not made to be used with a base, and therefore they're not given any sort of guidance for how to use this pattern with this base, now you'll be able to figure that out by yourself. I really hope that this video has helped you guys out. The questions that I've addressed in this video are some of the most commonly asked questions that I've received since starting up alltapestrycrochet.com. And I totally understand that because as a tapestry crocheter, this is one of those skills that you really need to know in order to be able to take the process of creating tapestry crochet projects into your own hands. Since this is such an important topic and such an important skill to have as a tapestry crocheter, if I have left any questions, doubts, confusions, if I've muddied the water at all, please feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below or message me directly on the All Tapestry Crochet Facebook page. You can also look for answers in one of the many free tutorials on alltapestrycrochet.com. This is the last video of the Tapestry Crochet for Beginners series, so now that you've seen them all, I encourage you to go out and just give it a try. There are some things that you'll learn so much more about by doing than you'll ever learn from reading a book or listening to a lecture. So I encourage you to just go out there, give it a try, and be amazed by how much you're capable of. I wish the very best of luck to you all, and happy crocheting!